we're back for a coffee chat for once Bryce I think it's been we've had like a month of being as hot in the UK I think as it is in Atlanta <laughs> so I've got my water not my coffee how are you doing I'm good it's stressful I was telling you yesterday I had to cancel some shows because we've got some issues of construction happening here and <sighs> just another day in the city just another day in the city but I know I haven't had a chance to even talk to you since I got back from Washington DC and I know that's kind of what we're going to talk about today is judgment and it's such an important thing I had a lovely chat that you couldn't join us for because of your electricity although I did say to people that they could choose whether you were teaching President Trump yoga or you had a power cut so we'll see what the vote comes out on the things could be both no you just don't know the electricity might be complete way um <laughs> but anyway what we're going to talk about today is we're talking about the importance of judgment and how so many of us make judgments about things that we haven't experienced and then when we experience them for ourselves it completely changes our mind and you've just had the most brilliant example of that of when you and Steph went to DC so talk us through that yeah, and it was a lesson for me because I'm a firm believer in um, settling into things and doing your own work. That's all I talk about all the time is making sure you're in your own sovereignty with your own thoughts. Not saying you can't. I mean, I listen to multiple people all the time, but making sure you're not clinging to ideas, but listening to everything and then coming up with your own conclusion. And I, you know, a lot of times what we talk about, we say this in the yoga world all the time, what the teacher teaches is what the teacher needs to learn, right? And mm. so Stephanie and I had, we've got more trips planned um, where we, I love to research. She's good at divinating. So we're combining those with our powers combined. We're, we're having fun doing it, going and exploring these places. And we had had this awesome time in Tennessee at this hidden ISIS temple in Tennessee. And then the next day we drove up to Washington DC, which was about an eight hour drive from Tennessee. And so we just drove up for one day. And that morning we got up the next morning, we were going into to, to the 10 mile radius. That is the district of Columbia. Stephanie and I both, I think, were preparing ourselves to walk into a really heavy, dark, toxic place because we had been hearing all these people say these things about D.C., say these things about D.C. And yes, we know that there has been shenanigans that have happened there. However, when we got to D.C., I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. It is the most magical city that I and I've been very fortunate. I've traveled the world. I've lived everywhere. But D.C. was one of the most magical cities that I have ever been in. And I felt like um all the buildings were Tartarian buildings. It felt like it had been cleaned up. It didn't feel, I mean, Atlanta, where I live, I live in a red state. So I live in a very conservative state. Atlanta's liberal, but it's typically out of all the cities, Atlanta is not the most liberal. But compared to DC, Atlanta is super oppressive compared mm -hmm. to DC. Hardly anybody had that on. Um, nobody was distancing themselves. Uh, people were super friendly. They, they have city workers everywhere helping direct people on where to go. So nice. The cops were so freaking nice. Um, it, it was just, it was, it was so pleasant. I, it was one of the best days of my life. And mm. it taught me a lesson. Like, oh my God, I had been judging the city because of all these different ideas coming at me about this city. And I was expecting something completely different. And now I can't wait to go back. Yeah. I can't wait to go back. I don't think, in my opinion, some things might come down in D.C., but I don't think they're going to take that city down. I think they're going to heal it and reuse it for healing, you know. And so it just taught me that lesson of not to judge things until I personally have experienced them, until I have my own set of. And I'm not saying listen to your gut intuition 100 percent, because my gut has absolutely saved me this year in particular, has really saved me this year. But but also take in the information and make your own opinion about something. Don't just follow the crowd. Don't just say something because somebody else said it so, right? And that's, I think that's one of the biggest lessons of this Great Awakening. We've talked about this a lot. This Great Awakening, it started off as everyone being appalled by the truth of things, but that's not where it's heading. Now we're, we're waking up to the, the fact that we ourselves are sovereign individuals who have who radiate our own power and our own vibration. And no one is coming to save you. You have to save yourself. One of the most frustrating things to me about this Great Awakening thus far, which I've said before, is thinking that you can just sit around and wait for the Kennedys to do something. Yeah. It's like, I think they're busy enough anyway. I think they've got enough on their plate. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. 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 So, and so that, 
and that and what a journey and what a joy that is i was telling you catherine yesterday was a uh, guru purnima which is a celebration in india for teachers and for teachers that help you along the path and of course the word guru means to transmute darkness to light you know that's that's a powerful word that that guru is because we all have that ability to transmute darkness to light but again no one can do it for you you can take a, you can lead a horse to the water but you can't make him drink you have to be the one to make that that take that sip and so, and I know a lot of people are starting to, I get messages all the time from people telling me they've started a yoga practice or they started exercising or they started journaling, you know, to try to start working on themselves. And that is what's going to push us to the other side of this is if we all take the responsibility, we put our egos aside, the ego will make wise men look like fools. I have seen it so many times in this truth or community, the ego will get you into nothing but trouble. Ego stands for edging God out, right? Absolutely. And so working, put your ego, put your pride aside and start working on yourself because you, you are the treasure. You are the Messiah. You are the light of this world. You are that, you are that Holy spirit. You are that. So why not treat yourself that way and actually value that and work on yourself so that your light can shine brighter. I think it's such a good point. There's so many things I want to pick up on on that. I mean, I had a similar experience. So I went to Wales this weekend to a um, community festival that was being run by Russell Brand and um, Wim Hof. And I went because I really love Wim Hof. He's great. And actually, he's one of those people where when you meet him in person, he's even better than what you see on the screen. He's the most genuine, nice man. There's been so much controversy, say, about Russell Brand, and everyone's got an opinion on people like this. And dark light and everything and everyone is entitled to their own opinion so long as they realize it's just their opinion unless you personally know someone and you know I went there with a completely open mind and all I can say is it was the most amazing day the messages the vibe the people that he brought in to speak the people that the things that he was saying the way he was interacting with people it was nothing but positive now I'm not um, I did meet someone else there who we'd met for the first time, but she'd been listening to some of my videos and, and she didn't feel the same and that's completely fine. And she needs to respect what she feels, not about that individual, about the whole day. Um, but everyone's got to make their own mind up. There comes to a stage where you've got to say what resonates with you. And the other thing I think is really important for all of us. And like you say, when we're talking about things, we're talking to ourselves as much as everyone else is don't there's a big difference between speaking your truth and doing it in a way where you're trying to persuade or manipulate people to agree with you yeah and so i think there's a huge difference because everyone does have an opinion and that is all it is it's their opinion and yes you can bring in the more work you've done on yourself you'll bring in your intuition your gut feel and things but so often so long as you're open-minded like you were and like i were enough to actually change your mind when you a different thing presents itself to them right here right now and had you gone to dc five years ago you might have felt very differently had i met certain people five years ago i might feel differently but that's not the point we're all here right now and if we're going to constantly drag up everything and everyone's past all we're going to do energetically is take us ourselves and everyone else back there to that past and that's the thing energy can't be created or destroyed it can only be changed and so if we look at using DC for an example, yeah, five years ago, it probably felt terrible, but somebody's been there and somebody's worked on it. Somebody's cleaned it and cleared it. And so that energy was transmuted. You can't destroy it. You just can't. And I know I've, I've been talking a lot with our friend, Cindy, I know, you know, Cindy, she, um, and she, part of what she does is she uh, removes demons. And I, we were talking a lot about the, it's actually the, in my opinion, the best way to do it is how she do it, does it where she heals them. She tries yes. to send them back to the light. And how amazing is that? Because it is like the, the human, the human, human mind, the human experience, right? We're constantly, I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago. I'm constantly, I won't be the same person 10 years from now. I hope I'm not the same person 10, 10 years from now. If I am, that's, that's shame on me for not doing my work. You know, um, we're constantly moving and changing our energy as we grow and we evolve. And when we go through trials and tribulations, as I think these last couple of years has been for a lot of people, we've had to face things that we never expected to face. And when we take that friction and we actually bring it within ourselves and we settle into it and we work through things, 
even though that work is hard, even though that shadow work is hard, even though that can be rough at the other side of it, you always feel so much better and so much more liberated because you do have your own sovereignty. You do have your own um, autonomy over yourself. And, and this is not just something that's common in the truther community. You see, this is just a human issue. We, I see this in the spiritual world all the time where people will try to mimic a teacher versus taking what the teacher is offering and finding that lesson within themselves. You know, it's like we, we as humans feel this need to, to mimic versus staying in our own, in our own understanding of things. And so it, this literally is, but those of us who are awake, what a great opportunity to be able to take such a magnified world issue and see it for what it is and then settle into it and bring it into the micro to then transmute ourselves into this new timeline. And you're right. You know, and I was saying to someone earlier today about this idea, when you talk about like going back to the past, like sometimes for me, forgiveness is hard. Like I'll admit that's something I really struggle with. Um, I can blame it on being an Aquarian, but I'm not going to do that. It's just something that I have a hard time with is forgiveness. And I have a hard time once somebody has lost my trust, I have a really hard time being able to get back to a place of trusting that person again, because my mind always goes back to, to what started that betrayal or whatever. And so for me, it's right. It's, it, when you sit going back to the old patterns, like that's something we all have to work on, whether it's with ourselves, whether it's judging someone else, whether it's the process of forgiveness, whatever that is, we don't want to go back to where we were because that that's not, that's not growth. That's not evolution. We want to constantly be moving forward within our own minds and within our own psyche and within the only piece, the own, our own peace that we have within ourselves. And our friend Shanti talks about this. Like I have a hard time forgiving. So if I mirror that back to myself, what is it about myself that I can't forgive? What is it about myself that has put me in that place of wanting to my mind to go back to the dark times, you know? And so that's where we start to really pull up that shadow work and that transmission of energy and stand on our own two feet and let go of some of these attachments to other people's approval, other people's expectation, what other people say is true. And we find what we think is true in that moment, knowing full well that that could shift and change. Yeah. And it's so lovely when you see it. One of the things I like most about, you know, the comments we get under our videos, the good, bad and the ugly is seeing how beautifully it's very obvious when you read comments about who's doing the works or, or not. And I've seen some beautiful examples that I've really learned from recently where someone's put something um, very negative, for example, about some person and then someone else has stepped in with a really gentle but loving response. Mm -hmm. and, and then the other person's come back very triggered by it. But because the conversation's gone on, you can see the energy of the conversation shifting below. And I think it's really beautiful to see because at the end of the day, as you say, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be changed or transmuted. And all, also, you are, there are only two things. You're either growing or you're dying. Mm -hmm. or decay whichever you want to say so in each and that can be a constant fluctuation throughout one day for people but if you take it in terms of your spiritual evolution your internal growth are you trying to keep that growth curve going up or are you finding yourself slipping back into old habits because we're so many people are uh, uh, sort of saying, why isn't it happening strong enough? Why aren't these people doing that? Why aren't people doing that? And it's a perfect example, again, to hold up that mirror and say, why am I so focused on what they are doing? What am I doing? What am I doing right here, right now to create the world that I want to be living in? Yeah. Yeah. And that is true when people we project. So when people, that's what I say with the whole forgiveness thing. Like, so if you find yourself sitting there, saying, why isn't this person doing this? Well, what is it that you're projecting onto that person? That's actually your issue, your issue and your issue alone. And that's, that's just, and this is, this is just, and I want to say too, like, I want to make it very clear when you're doing shadow work, it doesn't mean that there aren't going to be days where you're going to have to sit and cry. Absolutely. Like there, there, it's, we're not saying that you're just going to rise up, 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 up. It's going to be, you know, it's tough. There's going to be, I mean, the day before I went to Tennessee, I, I literally cried the whole day. You can see my eyes are puffy in, in the picture with um, Stephanie and, and Bonnie. I literally cried that whole day, you know, and sometimes that is, is good because you're releasing something, 
you know, so I don't want you guys, I, for people who are new, because I know I've, I've had some questions on my channel, like for me to explain shadow work more. And I, I just want you guys to understand that when you start to work on yourself, when you start to go into yourself, it, it can be dark sometimes. It can be uncomfortable. And if you have to cry, then cry, you know, allow yourself that grace and that mercy to release. Um, I mean, I've gone through the Sophia code. I cry every freaking reading on camera. My mascara is running down my face. I can't help it, but that's a release of energy. And so I want everybody to know that, like, and that's why I think a lot of people subconsciously will sometimes move away from doing the work because it's not comfortable. Right. But yeah. On the other side, therapy is not comfortable. I'm a huge lover of ther talk therapy. I know we've talked about this, Catherine. I know people have ideas about therapy as being all bad. It's not all bad. There are some really, really, really good therapists out there. I had an incredible therapist, but it's not comfortable sometimes in therapy. Sometimes it is the therapist literally is just coaxing you with questions. So you're the one that's actually pulling up the information and, and they're keeping you in a very controlled environment so that you can actually have these self-realizations that are not fun sometimes. That's what in, in my courses that I teach, in all seriousness, the first day I tell my students when they're new to this, you know, this is not rainbows and unicorns. This practice is going to show you first and foremost where you're an asshole. You know, and that's not fun to have to see that picture of yourself sometimes, but that's where you start to be able to move through your own habits that are keeping you stuck and then reversing that, bringing you into this idea of decaying or death versus transmuting that energy and bring energy. It's like, if you look even at the body, like if we have a tightness in our body, if we look at that from a spiritual perspective, all that tightness is, is stuck energy. That's all exactly. that is, right? So you have the ability to work through that to start to unstick the energy so it can then move. And a lot of people you see in not just yoga, Tai Chi, martial arts, I'm sure it happens to, happens to athletes sometimes where they're moving their body and something releases and they feel it release. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it happens a lot. And this fits in so well with what Jamie and I were talking about for the fourth agreement of the book, the fifth agreements yesterday about always doing your best and your best when you're feeling ill or sick or depressed, you know, that your best will vary day by day and often several times during the day. But when you, I think the thing is, is when you go to bed at night, you and only you know whether you feel you've done your best, whether you feel you've kept an open mind, whether you will feel that you're growing or decaying. And that, again, it's, it's not about judgment. It's not about suppressing feelings, completely the opposite. It's about being honest with yourself. And when you can really be honest with yourself, warts and all, then everything starts to shift for you. And I think this is what worked for me. You know, we were talking before we started filming about where are we at? Where do we feel we're at now? And I think this is such a key part of the process for me is about every single one of us starting to take a really honest but non-judgmental look at where we're at and saying, right, now which bits do I want to transform? Exactly. It's funny you were saying that about going laying in bed at night. And I, I do that often. And I, I want to tell people sometimes the best you can do is taking a day off and crying. Sometimes that's the best you can do that day. And to listen to that, I think part of the old system that we're trying to leave is this idea that we have to check things off of a list. And that's not necessarily the case sometimes. And listen, I, you know, right now, I know that the whole July is the theme of death and rebirth and a lot of things are crumbling. And I know that there's things I feel anxiety there. I know we're all kind of feeling these different emotions because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, we don't have a, I keep laughing and saying I would be a happier human if Trump would just give me a syllabus of what's happening. I'll keep it a secret. Yes. Just give me a syllabus. My PTSD will relax, but you know, but, but also on the other side of that, I can, you have that choice. You can either look at it from a stressful position and play into that anxiety or I can step back and for me, I can take a, I can turn around and look at my life. And if, if it all ended tomorrow for me, I'm proud of this life. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not because I, you know, started some crazy business and made millions or not because of it, but, but the amount of work I've done. There have been times where I wasn't the best person in the world. There have been times that I'm kind of ashamed of, but those places brought me into a place of healing and recovery from, from being a human and trans. And so if I were to leave, if I, if, heaven forbid something were to happen today and I were to leave this, this life, I would be totally happy and proud of myself for what I have actually done and accomplished in this life with myself, just within my own inner world of self-work. 
And so that's what I'm hoping people will start moving forward. You know, they won't put their value in like what they've done business wise or how much money they've made, but how they've worked on themselves, what kind of a person that they have, you know, in, if they're nice to people, is it a genuine kindness or is it because they've been told to be that way? Um, yeah. if, if, are they repressing the tears? Are they, you know, what, what you are, I want all the humans. To, I, t- I tell this to my students all the time. Like, yes, part of the yoga practice is intentionally pissing you off to see your triggers, but also part of it too, is for you to understand how beautifully wonderful and perfect you actually are as a human being. That sperm hit that egg and there was a flash of light and that light was you. And that's the power that you hold. That's the power that you possess. Nobody else, nobody on YouTube can come and do your magic for you. Nobody in the government can come and like transmute that energy for you. You have to do that yourself because that's how powerful you are. It's not a punishment. It's a celebration because you are so freaking powerful. You are created in the image of the most high. Your soul is created in the image of the most high. So are the, so is the animal soul. So are the tree soul. You have that spark of light. And so doing this work and working on yourself and creating your own opinions, that is something that is so uniquely powerful because you are that special. And so I want people to change their perspective of being stressed out about having to do work themselves and see it that it's because you're the Mac daddy. You're, you're the also- supreme. If it was truly stressful, if anything in life was truly stressful, you know, we've spoken about this before. Um, I, I'm, I've always been quite a naturally stressy person Same. Um, and take on all responsibility. So it's one of the biggest things that I'm continually working on myself. And it actually was really gave myself a pat shoulder because one of my friends that I work with a lot, he said to me the other day, he said, oh, you know, you, I've never seen you so relaxed as you have been over the last six months or things like this. Now, the thing is, I recognize that in myself. So it's a constant work in progress. I've, I've shared before that my husband's so laid back, is horizontal. So if one of my cats goes off hunting for two days at a time, he's completely, oh, how wonderful that he's having such a wonderful time. And he doesn't, and I'm like, where's my baby? You know, sort of thing. So, but you, you're recognizing it. But the whole point is those triggers are only your triggers because if they were a universal stress, everyone would find the same, same thing stressful. And people don't. Everyone's got their own things that they find di- difficult, challenging, stressful that they think is impossible. We've all got our own limits. I mean, I'm constantly in awe. As I say, I'm going to go back to an example. Wim Hof, met him. He's 60 something. I don't know how old he is. So incredibly fit, so incredibly flexible. You can tell when you meet someone whether a hug's genuine, yeah. whether a smile's genuine. You can tell whether they make eye contact. You can tell how they make you feel. And the thing is, not everyone's going to like the same people. It's not about putting someone on a pedal stool. I don't mean that at all. But I mean, when you truly accept, when you're doing this work and you truly accept you can't have it both ways, if you believe that we are all connected, and if you believe that we have some control over our own reality, then you've got to accept all our reality. So if you're attracting the same triggers into your life all the time, I've been through a phase of that recently, <laughs> you've got to take responsibility for it and say, I have attracted that into my life. There's a lesson here I haven't learned. And there's one, I won't share with it now, but I will share it with you all, but it's not appropriate to share it now. I'm still learning it. I'm still learning it, but I can recognize I'm still learning it because the same triggers are coming back into me. And I'm like, okay, I'm the common denominator here. Well, that's your your higher self. That's um, something. So when you, it's like when a, you know, we've all used this example before because it's one of the most common. It's like when you have a girlfriend that's constantly dating the same type of asshole, it's a different guy each time, but it's the same. And who's the common denominator? It's the girl. And so what's happening though, is that unresolved issue within you is magnetizing that in to heal it, to heal it. Absolutely. So until you actually realize that that's what's happening, it's like, that's why when you realize your triggers, even though triggers aren't fun, we all have them. um, When you realize your triggers are literally your higher self going, Hey, pay attention to this. You can go, Oh snap. Like this is my path. This is the power move. This is the plot twist okay, I see you. This is what I need to heal and work on. And, um, and there's so many different ways to do that, whether that's through exercise, journaling, therapy, um, 
you know, it's, it's, and for me, I, I, I use humor a lot. I think you do that yeah. too, Catherine. It's, it's when something really stressful happens to me, I try to find the humor in it to, to dissipate the stress. To me, it really it, works, doesn't it? It really does dissipate the stress. Although I have got myself into quite a lot of trouble in my school days with laughing at very inappropriate moments, but <laughs> it still made me laugh. Yeah. But people often ask us, why do we do this? And for me, I've been, again, I've been thinking this. Why, why am I talking to people and have these chats that people might think are insignificant or they might find useful, depending where you're at? And for me, the reason is, is like, I love connecting people. I love the fact, like you've just hit on, there's so many tools out there. There's products there's light therapy, there's journaling, there's yoga, there's cold showers, there's breathing, there's walking barefoot, there's hugging an animal, there's, there's doing something kind for your neighbor, there's hugging a tree, uh, you name it. There, plus, all, there's every possible range that you could have from free of charge, you can do yourself anywhere to spend a fortune and get some help along the way. And all of those are useful. So what I love doing is showing people that the, all these opportunities that are open to them if they want it and all you've got to do as an individual is find one that resonates and just start somewhere because we will all go through stages of our life where we do hit rock bottom or have really tough challenges so it's not it it's not brushing over those but it's just saying there's so much help out there for you if you want and the first step is just asking and being open and I, I was just, as you were saying that, I was reminded of a few years ago, there was a radio DJ here in Atlanta with the morning show. And he talked about, he was talking about the whole thing about energy. Again, not, you can't, you can't destroy it or create it. It just has to be transmuted. And he put a challenge out this one morning. And I don't know why I remember this because it was, I guess, because it was such a good idea. He said, you know, when you go about your day and someone does something to you, like flicks you off or reacts negatively to you, watch how that then changes you and how you start treating other people. So his challenge was if someone were to like flick you off in traffic or say something nasty to you, take it in and then make the decision that the next person you see, you're going to be nice to, you're going to smile at, you're going to try to help. And that's your power. That's how you start to transmute that. Now think about that within yourself. So that's another person shooting, projecting their energy onto you. Think about the energy you project onto yourself. So when you say something unkind to yourself or when you're triggered by something somebody did unintentionally to you, if you can stop that for a second and then try to move through it, change it, that's again your superpower. That's 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 the God particle. That's the light source within you. And how and if we all did that, like how the world would change overnight if we all practice that consistently, consistently. And, and I, I'm saying that more to myself too because I'm the worst yeah. when it comes to Atlanta traffic. I'm usually the one flicking people off when it comes to Atlanta traffic. I can't so. drive in City Sense anymore. I was so impressed with you and Steph because I just can't because I just haven't done it for so long. I'm just like, oh, but I can, of course. That's a complete rubbish statement to make. I can, but I choose not to. But on that note, just doing something small that's kind for someone else can completely just have a huge ripple of so quickly. So on Sunday when we were at this festival, the guy in front of us at the lunch queue um, the place was just um, taking cash and they'd run out of change. And so he had four pounds left that he couldn't get back in his change because they didn't have a change. He said, don't worry about it. Just take it off their order behind. And then everyone started doing that. So by the time soon, it was like 25 pounds and someone who couldn't afford to get something could then get a free lunch. And, and this ripple of joy that went through that started off with one person just saying, it's fine, pass it forward sort of thing. And it's just so easy. It's those little things, just a smile, a nice word to someone, or actually stopping off your phone, getting off your phone, and just having a proper present conversation with someone can just transform someone's day. So spend extra five minutes with your dog. Exactly. Extra five minutes petting and cuddling your dog. It's going to change your dog, and it's going to change you too. Yeah, it's... um. But I will say, ever since we started talking about this, more and more people, and you're right, Catherine, more and more people are taking the initiative to work on themselves. And that's so excited because even though there's still a lot of people in the world who won't do it, when one person shifts, they vibrationally change five other people around them, we'll say. Yeah. There was more, but we'll just say, then they change and it just starts to trickle out. And what a beautiful world we'd live in if every single human being took accountability, 
realized their triggers were their triggers and worked on themselves, we would have such a kind world and such a fantastic world to live in. And it is, it is uh, true. What I think it was Gandhi that said, be the change you want to see in the world. You be that change. You be that person that you want to see in the world. And just don't watch wait, what don't wait for the Kennedys to do it. <laughs> yeah, don't wait for them. They've got enough to do. Yeah. <laughs> so you believe it. So, um, yeah, I love it. I always feel so much more positive after our chats. And, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we are going on this journey with you. We are absolutely not saying that we've got this, all of this thing. But what we are saying is we're completely committed to working through it. And I have seen such a huge transformation in myself because, you know, I am so much happier, so much calmer, um, so much. I, I've always been excited for life, but I'm so excited for everything. And, you know, I do not see this as prison planet at all. I really don't. Your shift that you saw in Washington, D.C., I see on the whole planet. I really, really don't. I know that there's people having terrible times and other things, but the best thing I can do to help that them is to work on myself. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Well, brilliant. I can't wait to hear where your next trips are coming up to. Um, I'm so pleased the internet was on today. Jamie and I missed you last night. Um, no, shout out lovely. to Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa too. I couldn't get on with her. I like oh. panic, panic text morning, early in the morning. and was like, oh, my internet's not on. So, um, oh, so. And they understand better than anyone because they've had so many internet problems. The amount of times poor Shanti gets chucked off her own show. <laughs> And she copes with it so well, doesn't she? Because she's yeah. just like, you know, d don't sweat the small stuff sort of thing. No. Um, if, you can't, if you can't change it and you can't help it, then don't sweat it because there's nothing you can do. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so, and that, that's true for everyone because, I, I, again, with anxiety, I get anxiety. So when things I think I can change, but I can't, you just have to let it go and know that it's in divine timing. And so, so yes, guys. Or was I teaching Trump yoga? I don't know. No, just kidding. Yeah, you see, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look out for those pictures. I I wish, I wish, guys, that would make my channel way more interesting. <laughs> oh, wouldn't, it be fun? wouldn't it be absolutely fun? Well, thanks everyone who's watched us, had a coffee or a glass of water or a glass of wine, whatever your tipple happens to be with us. And we will be very soon. Lots of love to everyone. Have fun. Bye, thanks, guys. guys.